Hey everybody, welcome to Alum House Sound. My name is Dave, and today we're going to talk about some custom routing between your console and your DAW. All right, so welcome back to Alum House Sound. We're going to dive right into a pretty custom question. Now, before we get to it, if you have questions, you can always leave those in the comment section below. I'm always answering those questions, but if you need specific help or something that's super lengthy and you don't want to type it all into YouTube, uh, you can go to my website, which I'll put the link here. And at this website, you can fill out the contact card. We can get your one-on-one -on -one help and get your questions, your specific questions answered. We're going to dive into this viewer's question right now. This comes from Chris. And so let's jump in here right away and see what you can come up with. So Chris says, I've been following you for a while. Love your content because it's super helpful. I have a question I hope you can help me with. I'm using an X32 as an interface with Pro Tools Studio. I'm trying to figure out a way to record the channel strip and effects as well, not just right after the preamp. I watched your video on this subject and emailed you before. Please forgive me as I am a slow learner, I guess. With my setup, I'm trying to use 20 channel inputs as well as the channel strip and effects. I'm assuming card out 1 to 8 uh, equals out 1 to 8, then card out 9 to 16 need to be the P16 outs 9 to 16 in order to get the four effects routed. If I make card out 17 to 24 to be out 17 to 24, can I make card out 25 to 32 to be P16 out 9 to 16 as well to get same effects and then use the monitor control room outs on the back of the X32 for playback. Regards, Chris. Wow. <laughs> yep, these are the questions we get. So we're going to try and figure this out, figure out what the actual use case is, what is Chris actually trying to accomplish here, and see if we can guide him and you down this path of using as much of the console as possible for your specific situation. So my first question is, what do you think? Is Chris on the right path? Type it, type it yes, yes or no. Is Chris on the right path? All right. We're going to dive into this, and what I want to do is just kind of screen share. We're going to use a spreadsheet because that's usually the best way for my brain to work and start to pick out what we need. So we're going to put a copy of, of this email up on a spreadsheet, and we'll kind of dive in. So let's get to it. All right, so I've gone ahead and set up just a basic channel. Uh, this would be for our USB outputs. So maybe if I type in here USB channel. Uh, and then the source, what is actually the source of that? And so we know that we have 16 options here for the P16. And so that's a great way to start. We know we've got 16 there. Let's just knock those out right away. We can figure out what we want to do with them in a minute, but that's a great place to start. The next thing we have in this situation is buses. We can use buses, uh, eight of them, uh, if we want to, uh, to send out for our effects. Because he talks about, in here, he talks about wanting to have the effects go out as well. Now the challenge is the 20 channel inputs. Uh, if he's trying to get the raw signal, uh, so 20 channel inputs as well as the channel strip. So that's going to be a little tough, but I think we can work that in. So we can use the P16 for the first 16 and then we've got four more that we need to stick in here so let's... so i think what i'm going to do here is use buses and i'm going to extend these down here and then this would be our input 17 input 18 input 19 and input 20. So what I'm assuming is that these top ones up here, this is actually input one, input two. Okay, I'll fill it in. That makes some of you OCD folks happy. I know, I get it, I get it. 
All right, so what we're saying here is that input one, we're gonna go ahead and capture that through the P16 channel one. That gives us our channel strip as well, uh, going across the DAW. Input two, so on and so forth. So we're gonna get 20 inputs. Now these last couple down here, uh, if I make these just a slightly different color, keep in mind what we're gonna do is we're gonna route only that input into the bus. And then we're gonna send the bus out channel 17, and that's gonna give us the capability to use the channel strip effects before we send it into the bus. Uh, now, one of the things you're gonna to wanna to do is send that pre-fader. That way, just like the P16s, um, you can, you've got a tap point, and I'm gonna assume that we just wanna get a pre-fader signal on all of these inputs, because the DAW is where we're gonna go ahead and make our actual adjustments on the mix. So let's just assume everything is pre-fader going in here, but this gives us 20 inputs, which is one of the requests here. With my setup, I'm trying to use 20 channel inputs, as well as the channel strip for those, that's good, and effects. Uh, and, and within this, you know, he asks about using the effects, let's see here, uh, uh, then card 9 to 16, out P16 in order to get the four effects routed. So I'm assuming that what he's trying to do is use the onboard effects, which are a mono send, but come back uh, on, on stereo buses. So if we look down here, that's why we're stopping at bus 12. Bus 13, 14, 15, and 16 are reserved for these four effect sends. So we've got a little bit of a limitation there, depending on what his big aspirations and goals are. But what we're gonna do is look at bus five, and all we're gonna do is route the effects one into bus five effects. Uh, so we got left and right. You can see what we're doing here. Uh, we can, that gives us now the ability to send these out uh, through the user outs out the card. So we can send the bus, just like we did for these last four inputs, we can send this out the card as well. And don't worry, we're gonna dive into X32 edit. I'll just pull that up here on the, con on the computer in a second, and we'll kind of show you how we route this. But this is gonna give us, I believe, what we're trying to get to. Now, he has these four remaining spots that he can send other stuff across USB into his Pro Tools rig. And then his last thing, can I use the monitor and control room outs on the back of the X32 for playback? Yes. Um, within all of this setup, what you would end up doing, once we get all of the outputs routed from the console into Pro Tools, then you would bounce those, mix those, whatever you're gonna do into your stereo bus and Pro Tools, send Pro Tools back across USB one and two into the console, and in the console, you can uh, you can have USB one and two going into aux one and two. Again, we're gonna look at this in a minute. And then aux one and two, you can just solo it. And you can solo that into the control room and you're good to go right there. So why don't we dive into the X32 edit. Let's assume that we've covered Chris's questions here. We've got his routing, he still has four extra spots. If he's got four extra inputs that he wants to route somewhere, he can do that. He's using up all of his buses and all of his P16 uh, situations, but he's got four additional raw tracks that he can run into the console if he wants to, or from the console into the DAW if he wants to. So let's pull up X32 edit and we'll see what we get from there. All right, here we go. We've got a fresh blank scene here in X32 edit. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and uh, assume again that channels one through 20 are our inputs. Uh, one through 16, we're gonna go to the P16. So let's do that first. We're gonna come up to routing. And in routing, let's say he's coming in local for his inputs. That's a good place to start. We've got our inputs squared away. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to Ultranet. And an Ultranet, but, but what we wanna do is change these to be pre-fader. We could even do pre-fader and mute if you wanted it to be muted, but pre-fader is what we're gonna do here. And so we'll just 
change all these to pre-fader. That allows our channel strip to impact what goes out and we'll get to the next thing in a second. All right, so we've set channels one through 16 to be pre-fader out. Now the next thing that we need to do, we're gonna to go to our card and we're going to set our card out to be alternate one through eight, nine to 16. So that's gonna take all of our inputs that come in, they're gonna hit the channel strip and then they're gonna to come to the alternate pre-fader and then they're gonna go out the card into this Pro Tools rig. The next thing we need to do is route our uh, additional inputs and our effects into the buses. So let's come down, we're gonna choose bus one and we're gonna to go to channel 17. We'll go zero, two, it's gonna be channel 18. Three is channel 19. Four is channel 20. So when I select channel 17, uh, I do wanna to go to sends. And I wanna make sure that these are all, again, pre-faders. So I'm gonna do, uh, all of these here are all gonna be pre-fader. We need to make these global changes. So let's click on these again. So now we've set all of these buses, bus one through 12, as pre-fader. So at this point now, we've, we can go ahead and we can select that channel 17, we've selected bus one, and channel 17 is the only thing going into bus one. Channel two, uh, bus two gets channel 18, bus three gets channel 19, bus four gets channel 20. So that's our 20 inputs we've got set up there. Now the next thing we wanna do is set our, um, our effects returns. So we're going to do channel seven, uh, sorry, mix bus five. And what I'm gonna do is click on mix bus five. I'm gonna go up to the channel and I'm gonna stereo link. So five and six are linked. Let's just do this for seven, eight while we're here. Nine, 10, yep, and 11 and 12. So these are all linked. They're gonna get stereo panning and now what we wanna do is come back here to bus five. On the left-hand side, we're gonna to go to our effects returns. You can see that those are here, and we're gonna pull up just effects one. So that's gonna send effects one left to bus five, effects one right to bus six. We'll duplicate that down the bus returns here. Bus 11 gets our effects four return. So now those are also sent out specific uh, buses. So now we gotta make sure that those buses are coming out the next set of routing for us. To do this, we're gonna use some custom routing because it's gonna be a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna go ahead and come in here and I'm gonna scoot down to the end and say user out. I'm gonna go 17 to 24 and then the last one 25 to 32. That way we can put whatever we want in those spots in the user out settings. So now that I've done this, we need to set those buses. We just wanna confirm that those buses are going to our outputs or the outs. So we'll come up here to out one to 16 and we're going to take a look here and let's find out, all right, post fader. So we're gonna set mix bus one to go out, output one. And we're gonna do this all the way down, pre-fader, pre-fader. Uh, this looks a lot like what we just did, but it is slightly different. There we go. Move this over here. All right, now if you look, we do have these last four buses, and like we talked about, those buses are set to go to mix bus uh, or sourced from 
mix bus 13, 14, 15, 16, but like we talked about, we're not gonna be sending those out of the console. But we do have outs one through 12 sourced from the buses one through 12. That's great, that's what we want. Because now we're gonna go over to our user out section, way over here. We can come down to out 17 to 32, and we're just going to come over here, click on this, and what this is gonna give us So this gives us now our eight outputs coming from here. So if we think back to our spreadsheet, we had 16 channels using the P16 routing. Then we have the next four still for inputs, but we sent those inputs specifically to Mixbus one, two, three, and four, which is what we get here. And then the remainder uh, of the 12 buses are the next output. So this gets us uh, through 24. Then we're gonna come down here and hit the last four of these, all the way to Mixbus 12. Like we talked about, you've got four additional outputs that could be used or sourced from anything. And I would just recommend that Chris, if he's doing that, comes in here and let's say he wanted to grab local, the last local four connections, he could come over here and he could take these, um, let's say it's 25 to 32, he could then take this and grab the last um, inputs in from the console or if he's got something else coming in. But these are not what are on our spreadsheet, so we're going to leave these set as off. The last thing that we need to do now is get his return coming back in from Pro Tools. So we're, to do that, we're gonna go back to our inputs and all we have to do is on record, we can do aux in, we're gonna remap to card one and two. And for the play section, we're gonna remap to card one and two. That just lets us know that anytime, no matter which setup we're in, record or play, that the Pro Tools output is gonna be coming back into auxiliary one and two. And that way, all he has to do is come in to aux here, he can select it, he can remove it from the mains, so it's not heard in the mains, but he can link, say okay, and then we can solo and bring this up. And now he's gonna be able to hear that in his headphones, soloed through the monitor output, and that'll be whatever he mixes in the DAW. Wow, all right, so we covered a bunch there. Hopefully, if you're Chris, hopefully this helps you out. If you're not Chris, Hopefully you've learned something additional about this console. Again, there is so much routing that can be done, so many different ways to use this platform, the X32, the M32 platform. It's a phenomenal tool to be able to use, whether it's in the studio or in a live environment for monitors, whatever you need it to do. Okay, you can't fix your car with it. Plenty of other things you can do with it, with this console in the audio spectrum. So thanks for checking this video out. Again, if you've got questions, feel free to leave those in the comment section below. I'm always answering those questions. And if you need more assistance, feel free to go to the website that is uh, right here, as well as in the description. Fill out the contact card, and that's a way to get in touch with me outside of YouTube. Well, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We'll catch you all in that next video. Peace.